Hi everyone. Super excited to be here. Can we just do a temperature check for all the Balenciaga fans in the room? I need more. Um, I'm Ashmi. I'm thrilled to be here um, on stage with Eric, who is the Digital Innovation Director at Balenciaga. His journey has been just absolutely fascinating, and I'm really excited to delve into it. He's been there for 13 years. Um, and before we get into everything interesting and innovative the brand is doing, Eric, I would love to actually start off by you introducing yourself and also your personal journey at the brand for the last 13 years. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Very, very pleased to be here. And uh, so, yeah, I'm Eric. I've been in the house balancing up for 13 years, hence the gray hair and the wrinkles. But before that, I uh, started my career in, uh, with Web2. I think Web2 was mentioned first time in 2003. And I started to work as a copywriter in 2000, the year 2000, in uh, advertising, communication, so more of a traditional background, writing copy platforms, catch lines, working with creative teams for brands like Nike, for uh, across various range of in the industry. That was very exciting. I really love this year. Actually, I still use the skills I've built from this year now because doing it, uh, let's say, the, the hard way or the old school way, you, you, you have this old school, bare bone, hardcore skills you never forget about, like, I guess, bicycle. So that's my background, like doing 10 years in advertising and communication and then making a switch in 2011 to luxury and more specifically to Balenciaga, which I never left, left ever since. Fantastic. And over that time, there have been so many very, very cutting edge, leading edge projects, I think, that you've launched. Um, and I'd love to sort of like maybe go through and highlight some of the milestones along that as well. Right. Um, Balenciaga, when from the time I was there, yeah, I can, I can really distinguish two, two eras. There is before and after them now. With them now onboarding in 2016, late 2016, the digital aspects of everything we were doing, like just raised up, we took it another, to, another, to another level. So obviously there are like obvious uh, references like Fortnite. Uh, the Fortnite collaboration was really, really nice. Mostly, sorry, it's okay. I hear a lot of uh, the Fortnite collaboration was really nice, very smooth because of Epic Games too. I have to say, this is I have three three projects in mind I can tell you about, and Fortnite is very specific because it underlines one aspect: working with someone who knows its product. It's two IPs meet, meeting up with something; they all know where to go, how to do it. They're in hands, and with Fortnite, it was absolutely a delight to work with them. They know their tool, they know their IP. I remember when we did this 3D video in Times Square, in Cadeli, in Shanghai, and in, uh, I think it was in um, uh, Shibuya. I mean, just the video in Piccadilly organically hit something like 14 million views alone. And we liked it because it was taking people's attention in the street, like, I don't know, something like authentic about that. So this, this project was very cool. I'm also thinking about Afterworld, which was, and it underlines another aspect where you want to do something that could be too big for you. Um, in the sense where Afterworld was, so uh, for those who don't know, it was the Fall 21 collection. It was a fully digitalized collection. You could discover along a video game that looked like more a walking simulator. So we took over the codes of video gaming we developed the five zones, all the loops in photogrammetry, in volumetric capture. Then we had to launch it worldwide at the same time. China, it was, this is where you want to do things and you don't onboard the proper partners. And I'm thinking about all the people today here, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the quality of the person uh, in the place today. It makes me feel, you, it's hard to do, we delivered it, but it was a bit the hard way. So that's another side of innovation when you just go, but you don't 
uh, consider all the technical aspects or all the, let's say, the roller coaster is going to be because you don't know everything about it. We try to be a video game designer, and we learned the hard way. It was really hard to do that. So hats off to people who can actually do it properly. But we were really happy to do that because it was, uh, you learn the way. Balenciaga is, is a brand that learns. Uh, we want to do things, and we want to do things with partners and people. And we learn along the way. And this, the afterward project was like a learning session big time. I, I actually, I remember that project because that was launched during COVID. Exactly. And when the, there was no one was able to actually have the runway shows. But I think it was so brave because Balenciaga was one of the first and only brands to actually take that step and lean into, you know, taking a, the, the first plunge into launching a collection that was not only gamified, but also fully treated. Right. When none of the other brands were doing that. Right. Well, I could go, I could go because we did so many I could, I could name the, the Simpsons collaboration, which was another way to... My point is talking to the people who actually make, are uh, making, crafting the pop culture is, is, is important at Balance yeah, whether it comes from digital, from TV shows, from that's key. This is where you collide two energies that and something comes up. But my point is working with partners that know how to do it, like Epic Games, well, Afterwards, something very different, very technical, too broad, but we did it. We felt everybody lost weight. It was really hardcore. And then there are all the, let's say, crossovers like Simpson or. I can't name it all. So many. And you've also actually gone into the AI space with using generative yeah. AI across your run ratios and also your new families. True, true. That's more recent. Uh, we use AI at different levels. And for the campaign you mentioned in the backdrop for, for the last show where AI was used as a content uh, component for a much broader message. So we use AI for, let's say, creative purpose, but also for, and this is what we're exploring more, takes time, it's not that easy. AI as a tool or as a hiring partner, it's really good to, let's say, define your thinking skills and also to take your concepts away and let the AI work with it a little bit. This is very interesting. It's quite overwhelming sometimes, at times. But we use AI on these two, let's say, aspects, more of the creative side, sparring partner, and also something else that will come up later, but I can't speak about that. And also, of course, you know, you always seem to have like really a finger on the pulse as to what's going on. How do you, at the brand as well, uh, future forecast, the trends and insights, um, and also lean so heavily into culture because all of your collaborations are about art and music and fashion, you know, of course, meaning in fashion, but art and music and culture. How, what's your sort of secret sauce in, in kind of really understanding uh, what's, uh, what's coming up and what's... As Balancing as a brand and there as a creative director, and then now really he is steering the boat. So. If you don't have this vision or the curiosity is bringing on a regular basis, you, you could lose sight. We, we don't. So he's the, he's the engine. And he's very curious. So as a brand, how it translates is, and it's also a reason why I'm here, there are areas and territories we know, let's say more established digital activations, when you want to do 3D, when you want to create immersive world, when you want to do... This we know, we all know, and there are plenty of excellent partners. Then it's like, how do I pick them? How, how do I work with them? It's more of aligning the planets, let's say, between things like budget, timing, vision. When it comes to web, this is where the challenge is rising. I feel it's with web three. Um, coming from web two, web three is so, I, I don't understand it. I'm very humble, the approach is very humble. Of course, I, I understand it, but my point is, it's like a magma, it's a lava pit of so many entry points and energies, uh, so many people, so many NFTs, dynamics, uh, ordinals, uh, all the new artists. I really like what uh, was said before about the dynamic art. It's something we love to, how do you sustain the life cycle of something you create, create digitally, except that Google image and it's here. I love the idea of creating something and decaying and going somewhere else, surprising the owner of that. 
We're exploring this through Web3 and to be totally honest, we have a very humble approach with Web3 because this is where we see a new challenge, but also new opportunities. Yeah, and we were just talking about this difference because you also launched some um, NFC product, connected product collections. Right. Uh, and is there, that's kind of a debate, like whether connected products are Web3 or connected products are still, you know, not because, you know, what, what are your thoughts? Because, and, and where is that connection going to sort of evolve from? Right. Yeah, connected products or things or objects. Um, this is one. This is what we've made with uh, Archive, the band. And it's a, it's a step towards something that could be more, to me, it's not web free per se, but it's um, the introduction to something else. And that's something else that yet to be, in our case, discovered and packaged as a brand. But usually with a connected product, we want to do something more. So in that case, we work with a band, absolutely fantastic. I'm not sure everybody's familiar with Archive or if they like the sound, but just meeting a band, musicians, creators, and saying we're going to do something, and together there is a merch, there is design, and they compose an exclusive track that's only available in this chip here. And we're talking about scarcity, luxury, the rarity, this is such a great definition of, that's my product, that's my personal experience. We love that. But then you can take this to another level and direction. There's so many use cases in it. In it. Um, you, everybody knows about the digital product passport. We've been to that. We know about specific personal experience. This is where I think we need to explore how at some point somebody comes to a Balancega store or online, go home with something. How can we surprise him or reward him. Uh, in, in the NFT world, we talk about utility. It's exactly the same. How do we find the utility that makes sense for the brand, but also for the, the user? So it feels, it feels completely, it feels, it, it's a good experience, a great experience. So there are basic things, I'd say, digital passports go to. We should be all doing this because it has touch points and it impacts the sustainability, the trustability. And I think it's good for the year. And but also there are more there are more personal experiences we can design. And this is where we're exploring right now. Fantastic. So I know we're running out of time, so we're going to do a quick rapid fire. So four questions, and everything that comes on top of your mind, really quickly. Um, I have to go, sir. <laughs> uh, favorite digital activation? House. Yeah, I would say afterward. Yeah. Should I just say the name, or should I elaborate? OK. Um, sandbox or Fortnite? Mm, that's a tricky one. Fortbox? <laughs> that's a diplomatic answer. I'll take that one. Um, or 100,000 fiat? Oh, wow. I mean, I'm listening to Bad Religion. I love punk. I love so, crypto punk. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.